you foolish dog. What do you want to do? I guess she wants to go outside, so we better go outside. Okay, well it's time for a check-in. So, after literally 4,000 hours of sanding, let that dude go by. After literally 4,000 hours of sanding, I'm sure it's been that, if it's been a minute. This is how the top looks now. So, Pretty smooth, actually, I think. But if we come back around here, you'll notice my nemesis, the chain plate, still in there. But I think we've discovered what really caused all the trouble here. So this is the mast step right here. And Obviously, those look like the original holes. There was a pulley there, a you know, roller there. There was one here. And, but obviously there's a huge, huge crack. I can get my finger in there. And that's where the water's getting in. So, I don't see any cracking beyond here. And I've gone down to fiberglass back here. I've taken, this was all bondoed in. Who would ever use bondo on a boat, man? Who would do such a thing? So, anyway, I've sanded all that down to bare fiberglass. And um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a couple of sheets of fiberglass sheet right over, the, I mean, I'm gonna bond down a couple of sheets over the whole top of that. And I'm gonna dump resin down in the holes. I'm gonna tape them up from the bottom and squirt them full and start over. If that doesn't hold it, I just can't understand what happened because you would think the first glance would be that he broke a mast stay and the mast tipped to cause that crack. But that doesn't really bear out because there's no cracking front or back of this, which I would think is be where it would crack. It's more like something went, shoved it down over here without tipping. So I don't know what on earth caused that, but there it is, the next major repair. So still have the chain plate remnant down in that hole to get out of there and still have that one to get out of there. I'm almost done with the putty. I got one little bit over in that corner to finish. And then we'll be done with that. So I'm gonna leave this open for a couple days now because it's supposed to get nice and hot. See if we can cook the last of the moisture out of this top part. And I think we're almost ready for primer. Seal this thing back up and I can get rid of my plastic topper and get started on getting the windows put back in and getting this top side painted again. So it's closing in on being back to some semblance of close to being done. That's what I keep telling myself anyway. I've got to have faith. So that's it for now. Thanks. 
I know what you were thinking. Geez, Don, that looks pretty bad. Maybe better cut some more of that out and make sure you don't have more core damage in there. Just when I thought I was about done, I cut another hole in the top. So, there we have it. I cut a little hole out there and I got more of the same. But you know what? We're just gonna do, we're gonna let that dry out. And we're going to glass that chunk back in with a piece of wood. And this is going to be better than ever. At least that balsa comes out <laughs> easy when it's saturated. Damn, damn. What was that I just said a little while ago? About ready for paint? Yeah, not quite. Hmm. Better be worth it when this is all said and done. I'd give you a little progress report on the last hole in the boat here. So what I did is I, I this is where I cut the section out. So I put three layers of fiberglass bedding down in there and I tucked it kind of up under the section here that was original. Let's see if I couldn't. So there's a piece of plywood and then three layers of fiberglass bedding over that, and then one sheet all the way across the top. So obviously it's still rough, man, when that resin starts to set up, it gets lumpy. But anyway, um, sealed up now. So now the last step is to, I may have to do a little putty again on that just to smooth it out, and I think I'm gonna kinda Leave it as a little bit of a raised up section there. And um, hopefully that'll be the last of the putty work. And then I can start painting. That's the plan anyway. Get some paint back on this thing, or at least some primer. Start closing it up, primer around the windows and, and so forth. So that's our plan.
there is no chain plate over there. There is no chain plate over there. Here's a chain plate in my hand. This is the one that you saw me break the holes out of. A little bent, but none. At least I can use that as a pattern. So I got that. As it turns out, I just wasn't using the right tool in the right direction. I just got up on top with a piece of steel that I had, and I just started wailing on that thing. Drove it down through, as it turns out, going down through the boat instead of trying to come up out of the boat turned out to be much easier. Once I just was like, the heck with it, I'm just going to pound it out of there. So, anyway. I do believe that was the last major obstacle, I think, for um, getting the top finished back up. So, you know, I got the holes in there and I will kind of epoxy those back in when I get the new chain plates done. But now I can at least take this somewhere and um, get me some new ones built. So, yeah. That was a major, major win, and if I wasn't feeling like such a fool already, I'd be up on the deck doing my happy dance, but yay, <laughs> I got him. I didn't think that was going to happen. So, um, yeah, so we've got left the top side of this area. I can now start my fiberglass work cleaning these messes up. I'll sand around the windows so that as I start my primer, I can prime the inside, prime the outside, get the paint covered up there, and then get the windows back in place and get rid of my blue tape. So yeah, that's, that's a big blow it off my mind. I was sweating those chain plates. So I'll give you a quick look up top. Just so you don't think I'm hoodwinking you, there's port side. Starboard. Pull down through the boat, all the way through to the inside. So, this chunk to fix up, and that's it. We, seriously, this time we'll be ready for paint. So, as always, I'll be back.